Welcome, Mr. Mitchell. How are you? Fine. Good afternoon. And greetings from the finance building where I am today. And I'm very happy to have this conversation with you before the budget because, you know, many times people, you hear anecdotally people saying, well, they have money to do this, but why are they not doing that? And mm -hmm. part of that is the PSIP. So taking it down from the ground up, the Public Sector Investment Program. Mm -hmm. What yeah. is the purpose of the PSIP, Mr. Mitchell? Okay, let me explain the PSIP in the context of the national budget because it's a term that not many people hear about. The national budget comprises revenue, recurrent expenditure for ministries and departments, recurrent expenditure for statutory bodies and similar um, entities, including Tobago House Assembly and the capital expenditure program. The last one is what the PSIP um, is a part of. The capital expenditure program is the area in the budget that government spends on programs and projects. However, the PSIP in this early incarnation was a subset of the capital expenditure program because the, PSI, the PSIP is a strategic investment plan. It is tied to government's national development objectives. For example, in the past, you would have heard of Vision 2030, and now we're in Vision 20, 2030. In the past, it was Vision 2020, sorry. And also, you have heard of other development plans of various administrations. So, the PSIP is a set of programs and projects that are designed to give effect to these development plans. Uh, in the early 90s, it was a small component of the de development program. But over the years, it's, it, it's now matching what the development program is. So the value of the PSIP is equal to the value of the development program. Now, one of the things you have to understand in the context of what we are in right now, which is Vision 2030 and the five development teams, also uh, we are now dealing with the Roadmap for Recovery report that the Honorable Prime Minister had launched some time ago, and the report was um, submitted to Cabinet recently. So these outline a set of programs to deal with specific issues. In theory, the PSIP is the last area of any expenditure cutting that's supposed to take place because you want to make sure you have a set of projects that would carry the country through to achieve a development objective. So that's what the PSIP is. What you hear the Minister of Finance say on Monday, he will make reference to the development program estimates. That is the financial and accounting um, terminology used within the parliamentary process for the PSIP. But for, for, but for us who look at from a strategic point of view, like those of us who know strategic planning, that is what the PSIP is about. It, it sort of gives you a guide to why this project is being spent on, why the government is investing its money in, in this area and not in the other area. So the PSIP document explains that to you. So that's it in a nutshell. So I hope I give you in a short burst because we could go at length in an hour talking about the PSIP and so forth. I hope I... Well, if you if you'd give me the longer verse and chapter, I guess that would have been all she wrote. But <laughs> the amount of the amount of you, you say strategic policy mm -hmm. objectives uh, makes me wonder whether or not it's tied into the SDGs, and if so, how so? No, it's not tied into the SDGs. The twenty twenty PSIP showed how the Vision twenty twenty document was aligned to the SDGs. The SDGs is, as you know, is the Global Sustainable Development Framework. What we have to do and what member states of the UN have to do is to localize the SDGs. Now, the G7 countries don't have a PSIP, so their method of localizing the SDGs will be completely different to developing economies like ourselves. So we use the PSIP to localize the SDGs. So the 2020 PSIP book showed that alignment between our vision 2030 and the SDGs and how the SDGs is being implemented in Trinidad and Tobago, right? So um, last year's, well, this current PSIP made reference to it to show that we are continuing that localization strategy. So it is always, be, it is always there. Um, it may not be mentioned this year. Um, I don't want to give away too much because we're in the middle of, of finalizing it. Um, but it is always there. So I think when someone who has been following the, the, the PSIP for about two years and following the SDG process in Trinidad and Tobago 
will see that how the PSIP seeks to implement the SDGs. And if you'd recall last year, um, I think uh, around July, I don't know if I have the dates right, uh, Trinidad and Tobago presented its first voluntary national review where we indicated to the UN how we were in implementing the SDGs and in what areas we were implementing the SDGs. Uh, I think you had my colleague from the Technical Cooperation Unit on your program um, some time ago, and I think she would go through the process in terms of how we dealt with the voluntary national review and what needs to be done going forward. And once again, I'm really glad that we're having this conversation now before October 4. And with that in mind, though, is there, what's, what's the role of the division that you're the director for, and how does that tie in with the Ministry of Finance? Okay, again, if you have an hour, I can give you the whole history of, of, of my division. The Project Planning and Reconstruction Division um, is responsible within the Ministry of Planning at this time, because it's a division that is assigned to a ministry, um, to prepare uh, a PSIP um, document for consideration by cabinet that will comprise the national budget of any particular year. Uh, for example, let me give you very quickly how it runs through. Um, ministries, department, agencies have to submit to the Project Planning and Reconstruction Division their projects and programs they want to implement for the upcoming fiscal. The April 30th is a deadline for that. Some, well, in most cases, it will be submitted in May or early June, depending on um, the complexities of how the ministries are um, preparing their estimates. And what we do is that we sort of prioritize those programs and projects based on the existing government national development objective. In this case, it is the Vision 2030 for the long-term agenda. But given that we're in a global pandemic, uh, I don't want to give out too much um, for what the minister is going to say on Monday. But given that we're in a global pandemic, we will be factoring in this year's PSIP the Roadmap for Recovery Report and the Community Recovery Report. Those two reports will help us in a medium term focus to get back on track because what the global pandemic did was derailed us a bit from the Vision 2030 pathway. So this year's PSIP is going to do two things. It's going to continue the part of Vision 2030, but we have to acknowledge that there have been some derailment in certain sectors and we have to bring that back on track. So the Roadmap for Recovery Report gave us some recommendations. Now it's very important that um, your listeners understand. The Ministry of Finance, in this case the Minister of Finance, will indicate to the Ministry of Planning and Development the size of the capital expenditure program. That is, I am going to spend X billion on development program and it's up to the Ministry of Planning and Development to rank and prioritize the programs from all of the ministries, departments, and agencies, and try to get those programs within the envelope, that's what we call it in the public service, a fiscal envelope, to which we will submit that to cabinet. Now, the PPRD, we don't do that alone. We have a sister um, division that's, that is just across the floor from us uh, in, in um, the International Waterfront Center for the Socioeconomic Policy Planning Division. What they do um, they are responsible for the Vision 2030 planning process. And what they would advise us is in terms of what remains to be done, how the various development teams are fared, and they would look at the projects and programs in the ministries and advise us from a policy side what they view as the areas of focus going forward. We will take that and then we will match that with whatever programs and projects that can deliver on those priority areas and focus that the SCPP would recommend to us. And see, I'm talking, I'm talking about how it is you, you match those areas of focus. That is one of the things I want to come back when we return to this discussion. We are speaking with Peter Mitchell about the PSIP before the budget. Stay with us. KTM Friends give you more reasons to celebrate with our biggest Republic Day sales event. From now through September 30th, get 30% off all our innovative learning systems. This is a great investment for your children. I would encourage any parent to buy this product. Buy this kit for your children. 
It's very good. That's huge savings on the most successful educational programs designed that's aligned with the Ministry of Education syllabus. 30% off the only learning system backed by 10 years of achievement in home-based learning and thousands of successful students. It has changed the life of my, my two sons. She graduated as class valedictorian. Had it not been for the SEA success, she would not have done so well. Call now for this amazing offer. Get our newly upgraded packages for preschool and primary school at these incredibly discounted prices. This is a limited time offer, so call now. 33-I-READ. That's 334-7323. Let's transform your home into an effective learning environment. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kari Roberts and this is me in 60 seconds. Now some of you may know I have a 16 year background as a chef and counting, so I absolutely love food, I absolutely love cooking. But more recently, I've gained a background of three years in media and I absolutely love that too. Now, I have a background in so many other things. I've done martial arts, I've done modeling, I've also done things with woodworking and things getting my hands dirty, including DIY. And there's so much more that I would love to do. What I also have a passion for is helping others. And that is something I try to inculcate in my life every single single day and I try my very best to just put my best foot forward in everything that I do and that's me in 60 seconds every word every line every paragraph depicts a real moment in someone's life a father a sister a mother a brother we at Newsday are dedicated to you the people and through independent, unwavering journalism, strive to always bring your stories to life. Because your stories are more than just words. Newsday, independent and credible. Welcome back to In Depth with me, DK Ross. Now we are speaking with Peter Mitchell, Director of the Project Planning and Reconstruction Division, Ministry of Planning and Development, about the PSIP, the Public Sector Investment Program. Now, Mr. Mitchell, in terms of that relationship between your division and other ministries, what are the what's the relationship with government ministries in the way that the PSIP is implemented? I know you started to explain. We give you full reign to continue doing so. Thank you. Right. I just want, we went on commercial break. I just want to uh, end, end that segment of my discourse by saying there's a third division that works with us called, well, actually it's two more, uh, the National Transformation Unit. They provide the, what we known as results-based management component. They help us with the monitoring and evaluation. They examine the indicators and they tell us where certain pro projects were performing and were not performing and whether or not we should make a decision to either suspend those projects or to go into the ministries and work with them to uh, bring those projects back up to some level of implementation, successful implementation. We also have the Environmental Policy and Planning Division, which links with what I said earlier, the SETP Division. They provide us with the environmental context. Now, our relationship with the ministries is the other arm of the PPRD. That is our monitoring arm, where we monitor the implementation of the PSIP. And I want to also let your listeners know, the Ministry of Planning and Development, in particular, the, the Project Planning and Reconstruction Division, we deal with portfolio management. We don't deal with project management. We don't deal with executions of projects. What we do is we look at the entire PSIP portfolio. So during the course of the fiscal year, when we engage in with ministries and departments and agencies, we look at their monitoring capacity, we look at their implementation capacity, we look at how they are proceeding with the projects, and if we can offer assistance with, from within the ministry in terms of any deficiencies they may have, or if we can intercede on their behalf with, or with the Ministry of Finance or another ministry. Because you would appreciate that a lot of projects in ministries do have certain cross-functionalities. Cross a project in one ministry may impact on the success of a project in another ministry. That's why I said that my division, we deal in, with portfolio management. So we look at the portfolio. So you will find, particularly in, in the social sector, a lot of projects in, in one particular ministry may have some level of impact on the success of projects in another ministry. So we have to look at that, what I call the big picture, to see 
what we can do to ensure that all projects are successfully implemented. Sometimes we are successful, sometimes we are not given the prevailing circumstances. So that's our relationship with the ministries. And also, um, during the year, my division, my permanent secretary and I, sometimes we are called upon to appear before Parliament's Public Administration and Appropriation Committee. That's the committee that oversees the PSIP, and it's chaired by the Honorable Speaker. And sometimes we have to give to account on the portfolio. That committee may call particular ministries to explain um, why this project is not being implemented, or have you implemented certain recommendations from the Ministry of Planning or the Ministry of Finance. But that is how we interact with the ministries throughout the year. Um, also, when ministries, when ministries reach a particular point in the year when they feel that they cannot implement a particular project, but they want the monies to go to another project, the Ministry of Finance will ask uh, ask for recommendations whether we should transfer monies from a particular project to another project because there were some unforeseen circumstances, maybe tendering delays or, or something that caused a particular project not to be implemented in a particular fiscal. So we don't let the money go to waste. We move the money in, uh, to another project. It is done during the course of the fiscal year uh, where we advise our colleagues in the budget division of the Ministry of Finance or uh, when the Minister of Finance presents his midterm review, we may move wrong monies there. So our relation with the Ministry is to ensure and to support them to implement the projects that was approved by Parliament in the budget process. And in terms of the building out that portfolio that you would have described, what are some of the things that you look at for proposals coming into the division? I remember a little earlier in the conversation, you spoke about five thematic areas how do you look at those areas and decide, okay, well, this project is something that is going to be approved and first to implement, well, for you to oversight? Right. Well, we do it. We implemented from 2019 something called a project screening brief uh, that accompanies every new project that ministries want to put onto the PSIP. And we use that to determine um, the performance or underperformance of, of the budget. So the five development teams, as I said, gives us the policy context and guidance in terms of our work, in terms of managing the portfolio, as I alluded to earlier. So, ministries, departments, and agencies throughout the fiscal will be doing certain things. They'll be trying to do certain things. And of course, as you would, as you would appreciate, we have revenue challenges right now and that may impact on implementation. It may impact on the timely release of funds. So I, don't, I really don't envy my colleagues in the budget division. I know they really have a tough time um, throughout the fiscal in terms of meeting the expectations of ministries. So that is how we do it in terms of how we model what we call in within the Ministry of Planning, PSIP monitoring. And in our monitoring, we are assisted by the National Transformation Unit in some instances, but the overarching guidance we do is with our colleagues in the socioeconomic policy and planning division because you, as I said earlier, the PSIP is a particular type of document, a particular type of entity. It's not a, a, a wish, a, a general all. It, it has a specific purpose. It is tied to something. So the PSIP at this time, as I said, is tied to Vision 2030 as well as for 2022 to 2023 and 2024, it was also going to be tied to the Roadmap for Recovery and the Community Recovery Reports. So we have those reports. We have, what, we do, what we have within the division is a sort of a matrix system that we look at the key area that needed to be developed, key area that needed to be focused, and we see that if the projects are meeting those demands. Now, each ministry is supposed to give us, and they usually do, a monthly status reports, which is evaluated by our project analysts within the division and our project monitoring officers, and we make certain pronouncements from that. Usually, um, the Honorable Prime Minister may ask for a performance report. We, pre we prepare a performance report for him, and it's submitted to him, or sometimes he may wish for it to become as a cabinet, so the entire cabinet can see where we rank uh, the performance of various ministries and so forth. So that's what we do throughout. So I just, I just want to repeat that the, P the PPRD has two functions, preparing a PSIP for the budget and monitoring the execution of the PSIP. And in the monitoring part, we liaise very closely with the budget division of the Ministry of Finance because they are the ones who are responsible for the release of funds. So we always have an ongoing dialogue with the budget division 
uh, we discuss uh, various projects, if we should uh, move money into A, B, or C, or we should leave it there, or, or any other thing, or we just don't move any monies at all, or whatever the case may be. So that is what we do throughout the, any fiscal year. And, and both of us spoke to it, so I just want to list out those five thematic areas, there being building globally competitive businesses, improving productivity through quality infrastructure and transportation, placing the environment at the center of social and economic mm -hmm. development, promoting good governance and service excellence, and putting people first, nurturing our greatest asset. Yes. Now, yes. with just under a minute, I, I want to leave the closing arguments or closing statement to you. Thank you. And we want to thank you very much, Mr. Mitchell. Okay. Well, all I'd like to say is that um, uh, I want the public to not only listen to the budget presentation, but also go on the website of the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Planning um, at the night of the budget and look at the PSIP. I think the PSIP explains all of the numbers because I think the development program estimate is a series of codes and numbers which uh, the average public might not understand. But the PSIP is written in a narrative format so you'll be able to understand and you can see the purpose of where, why Project A is being implemented and not Project B. All right, so we want to thank you very much, Peter Mitchell, Director, Project Planning and Reconstruction Division, Ministry of Planning and Development. And that helps a lot in terms of you talking about that narrative aspect of it. But on behalf of the entire TTT News team, this has been In-Depth with me, DK Rasta. Thank you for joining. The winning numbers in the National Lottery online draws for Thursday, 30th September 2021. At 10.30 a.m., play with number 8, Tiger. Pick 2, the numbers 7 and 14, in that order. Pick 4, the numbers 6, 6, 7 and 0, in that order. At 1 p.m., play with number 21, Mouth. Mega Ball and Mega Extreme Balls called. Pick 2, the numbers 32 and 9, in that order. Mega Ball called. Pick four, the numbers seven, three, zero, and three, in that order. At 4 p.m., play with number 15, Sick Woman, Mega Ball Called. Pick two, the numbers 16 and 13, in that order, Mega Ball Called. Pick four, the numbers seven, three, one, and nine, in that order. And at 7 p.m., play with number 17, Pigeon, Mega Bonus Ball Called. Pick two, the numbers 18 and one, in that order. Pick four, the numbers 3, 3, 